Data mining plays a really important role in communication between templates and components. Data mining is really just a process or the mechanism used for pushing or pulling data between components and templates. So when a uh, data is coming from the source to the view, that's called property binding, and coming from the view to the source is event binding. So one way data mining is always unidirectional. Let's take a look at the Angular view model we seen earlier. So here in this model, the data binding occurs right here between these two yellow arrows here. So property binding is the flow of data from the component to the template, and event binding is the flow of data from the template to the component. Let's take a look how they are done in code. Okay, so here in the IDE, I'm going to open the front end, open the terminal in the mean stack agency, and we're going to run this app in gserve. Well, that's been compiled. Let's go open the SRC folder into the app folder, and let's open the template for the app component HTML, and also the source, which is the app component.ts. So those are two files we need to uh, modify. Okay, so I think that's going to be a good, we're good to go there. And let's take a look at the browser first. And there's our app. All right, so I'm going to remove everything here. We'll just keep the blue bar so we can do a little demonstration right in this white space. Let's go back in here. And then in the template here, so I'm going to remove everything. We'll just keep the top bar. This is the top bar here. And um, <clears throat> so I'll remove everything maybe like from line 30. We'll just keep the main container tag here, I think from line, line 28 all the way down to pretty much almost the end of the file. Yeah, everything to this SVG. Remove all of that, and then also remove all these comments. We'll keep the router outlet in the bottom. Okay, so we'll just do our examples right in here. You can remove all these comments in the top too. Just takes too much space. All right, so much, much better. Okay, so uh, let's just take a look at make sure it's there. Okay, good. All right. Now let's go to the component first in here, as you can see in the class space here is where you have your all, all your properties should be created in here. Any property or any variable you create outside of this class will not be uh, recognized by Angular because those are not Angular properties. Okay, these are just pure regular JavaScript variables. So we already have one here called title. It's created for us automatically when we create an application. I'm going to change the title to something a little bit more meaningful here and we'll display that to the browser. So this is a property to bind that to the uh, property in this source here, in the view here. Let's put an h1 tag. And in here, Angular uses a, a mustache tag, so a pair of double curlies like this. And inside this curly braces, double curly braces, you put your expression. Expression could be anything like a math expression, like 2 plus 2 or 2, two minus 2, something like that. Or a expression will be the title because that will be interpolated. Okay, it will be expressed as in term of a string. So this is called the string or the text interpolation in Angular. It will convert whatever is inside here. If it's a uh, um, calculation, it will you know do the e evaluation and then display that to the browser. If it's a variable, then it's going to look inside the component to see if there's a variable called title. If there is, then grab the value and display that. If there is none, then you can either get an error or display no value. Depends. So in this case, it's going to look at the title and find one and then display that to the browser. So as you can see, it displays right here into the view. Right? So that's one way of data binding from the source out to the view. So we can bind to a variable. I'll show you another one of binding here. This would be a, uh, let's put an h2 here. You can also bind to a function, as long as that function returns some data, right? So you can say something like uh, sum of something, and we invoke the function, when we refresh or we load this view, and it's not created yet, but I want you to create that uh, function first. Uh, also, well, yeah, let's go to the app component down here and create a function right below it. We'll call it sum is I'll use the anonymous function or the arrow function because it looks like an a property, right? As you can see, title is equal to a string, sum is equal to a function. So you can use that, we can just use the regular function like a sum like this is fine too, all right? So either way. But let's just use this so it'll be kind of consistent with the, our uh, title there. And so here I can return some data. So return something, and to make it this a little, little bit more interesting, I'm going to go here and create another variable called nums, and it's going to be an array of two numbers, 10 and 20. 
all right and we'll just display the sum of num of zero and notice if you type num it doesn't let you do it because this is a variable in the class field right so to access data field you must use the keyword this dot num okay plus this dot num or nums of one I mean it's typed here and then we return the sum of those two values to the uh, h2 tag here okay so we should get 30 if you go in the browser and there it is we get 30 from the expression right it only loads once because um, once you invoke one time then that's it until we refresh or reload the page and it will do another um, evaluation again okay so that is how you can do using this way where you, you interpolating text binding properties and functions or properties and display it to a node or text node here you can also bind uh, uh, um, attributes as well and uh, I'll just show you one here but it will be the same thing okay same way so let's say here I'm gonna bind to a style attribute and usually CSS you just put like for example color red like this and that will give you the red color right so um, if you just want to see it so there it is it's red okay we can do that using the binding as well because this could be a variable inside the uh, the class so if I copy that let's go to the class and let's create a variable here we'll call it uh, red is equal to this string we just copy from the view <clears throat> and so this red here holds the, holds the string or the text for the CSS and if I go back here and just put inside here the same rules curlies and then you put here red okay you see that it has some red errors it tells you it doesn't like it but I think it should work okay so if we save that and um, we could go to the browser again just make sure it still works so there it is it still works just fine okay and so and then you can do one way like that or there's another way to to do it but um uh i just do just show you one more and we're, we're done so let's let's do this one here okay so this one here let's call it style instead of binding that to the uh the uh, value you can bind the property using style i'm a little bit ahead of myself here this is called property binding still but um you do the same way so here let's put another variable called green instead okay so i'm binding to a green instead of the red so that means i need to go to the class and create a variable called green so let's go back in here and we create green down here the same thing color is green okay so let's save that and make sure everything looks good here okay so everything looks good if you go to the browser refresh it you see that this is green just like we expect all right so that's one way binding from the source to the view and one quick thing you notice if i type greens like this it gives me a red line in the template yours may not you may not see this information here and the reason i have it because i, er, I installed a um a language service which you can also do so i want you to do this you go to the ter extension here and search for the language service like this and then install the angular language service so if you do that then what you're going to get is a really uh, useful way to help you determine uh, if your code is is correct or not right on the template here if you don't do it it doesn't work this is a new feature um, added to angular 9 so kind of nice okay so that is uh how that's done i'm going to remove this it's kind of um I don't like that screwy line there so let's let's just keep that okay now let's do the other way around from binding from the uh, template here to the source okay so event binding usually you bind that to like a button right and you can say click me and how do you do that in JavaScript well JavaScript traditionally you put like on click right equals to a function called click me like that so similarly you can do this way except when you bind in angular you don't use the whole word on click here um, you use just the keyword click these are the actual event name in javascript right like if you do an add event listener you do the same thing you don't put the word on click in there you put just click or key up key down key press like that but then you wrap this with a pair of uh, oops of parentheses okay so that's called event binding 
and this is you bind you bind to a um, property so you use these square brackets here you bind it to a function so you event you put a uh, parentheses okay this is how it's done and so you need to invoke this function called click me and we're going to create that function in the source so over here I'm going to go down here and create a function called click me and uh, you can do it the arrow function here again so when you the function is clicked what do we do we can display some message to the console uh, something like clicked like that okay if I display go back into the browser here and press the F12 key so you can see the console here when it click and there's the message click me down here all right so let's make this a little bit interesting by doing a, a different kind of click so when you click on it you you know uh, what kind of data do you pass to the source because this one doesn't pass any data so when you pass data you need to grab some data and pass to the function right so let's say that above here I'm gonna have a input tag um, the type will be just of course text you don't have to put that it's automatic and <clears throat> you do something like that and so I can pass the data from here to the function how do you do it so in JavaScript, you usually give this an ID, right? So an ID would be something like this, and then you have something like, you know, um, input ID, okay? But you don't do this with Angular. To use an ID, you would replace this whole thing with a pound sign like CSS. So that is a unique ID for this input. And even though I call it input, I shouldn't call that, but it's, an, it's a unique ID. Uh, for this input tag here and this ID here is a reference in this template so anywhere in this template you reference the input maybe let, make it a little more interesting uh, input um, you know uh, message or something okay so the input message is a ID that is references this input tag and now because I have that reference here I can use that in, inside a function as a parameter or argument so I can say input and then get the value of the input tag so get the value and now whatever I type in this tags box will be passed over to the function when I click on this button so now the value we need to go and modify our function and receive a value from the source uh, the view and then we can say here and display the value in the console but to make it more interesting we can also have a variable outside here um, say that uh, you know a message is equal to blank but then when we see the value from the button we can display the message back to the source the view okay so we bind that to the message and then outside here we do the one way binding right so you can put here an h h3 and we'll put in writing here the message coming from this tag basically you, you type something here you pass to the function through event binding and then it comes back out through uh, property binding so kind of think kind of same what did up here except this is going in circle so let's go back and here we go if I type in something here hello I type click me and there it is right so that's event binding from the uh, uh, view to the source and I'll do one more and we'll be done with this video now this is a button you bind to that button you can also bind to the input tag so over here I can do something similar I'm gonna bind the, e, the key up event and that's gonna be equal to same thing this same function I'm gonna you know copy this and put it right in here okay so when I you know as soon as I type something it's gonna invoke its function in every every keystroke and when I do that it's gonna also update my message down here so I save that and go back to the view and if I type something here hello you'll see that it works right light right pretty cool huh so that's how event binding works so again just to recap uh, event binding is you bind to an event either you click or key up or mouse down mouse over all the stuff and you pass the data to a function as as an input and then you can pass the input from any any tag if you have an ID associated with that and then you pass that down to the source a function call receives the data you assign that to whatever you need and then the uh, data binding uh, probability binding is you have a variable or a function like you see up here 
and you pass it over to the view by using a pair of uh, uh, message tag or you bind that to a property like you do here you can also bind to the value too uh, using the same thing instead of key up I mean instead of style you say uh, you put the value and it will bind that to the data and you also see that as well okay so that's how data binding works and using one direction in angular